G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now in today's deep dive, we're gonna take a look at how we can take our co-pilot conversations from just a simple conversation into a collaborative canvas using co-pilot pages. So the scenario we're gonna look at here is we're going to use a business case, we're gonna reference a document, we're gonna create some content, and then we're gonna take that conversation into a collaborative canvas or our co-pilot page, and then be able to collaborate with our colleagues around the uh, contents of that page. So so you can see here, I am on uh, my, I'm in my co-pilot, my assistant for work. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to give it a prompt. I've got a business case and I just want to get a summary of the different options. So I'm going to say, can you please provide a summary of the options from this uh, business case? And I'm going to forward slash and I'm going to search for business case for M365 Copilot. Um, then I'm going to hit enter. All right. So let's have a look. And I'm referencing that document. We've got a summary and I've got the options. I should have three options out of this business case. So here I'm having this conversation. It's presenting it to me in the Copilot canvas at the moment. Now, once this is finished, what I'm going to be able to do is say edit in pages. Now, when I click on edit in pages on the right hand side, as you can see, I have now got what we call a copilot page or in actual fact, it's a loop page, right? So it's a collaborative canvas built on uh, Microsoft Loop. Now let's have a little bit um, more of a conversation with our copilot on the left, all right? So what we might do is let's have say, uh, can you uh, provide uh, uh, an outline of the implementation um, or milestones for each uh, option? And that's going to then give me a few different options. Uh, so Copilot's going to, it's not going to add it to the page at the moment. It's going to um, add it in the conversation on the left-hand side. So we can see here, we've got option one, option two, option three, and I've got an estimated um, implementation plan. Now, what we might want to do is, let's say we want to have that in the table. Um, can you present that in a in table format, please. And let's put this in a table um, so it presents a little bit better. So we can see here, I've now got those options and the um, the outline. So we've got month one, two, three. We've got month one, two to three, four to six. Now I might want to add this to our collaborative canvas or our page. So I'm going to click edit in pages. Now we can see here that that has added that into the page automatically for us. So it hasn't created a new page. It's actually building this page as we have our conversation. Now, what about we uh, have a look and let's say, let's use this option. Can you provide more details on the potential return on investment for each option? So again, we're just getting, building this page out. We're getting a little bit more uh, detail from our business case and we're inserting that and adding that into uh, into our Copilot page. So we can see I'm getting some responses here. I've got uh, some uh, estimation on our figures. So we can see there whether they're accurate or not uh, remains to be seen. We'd obviously have to fact check all of this as well, but let's now add that and edit that in pages as well. So we can see we are just continually building out this collaborative page. Now, when we're ready and we want to then collaborate with our uh, colleagues, what we can do now is we can share this. So you can see when I hit the share button, I can share uh, access to this uh, to this page, or I can copy this component. So being a loop component, I can copy this. Uh, it's going to create or copy this component for me. I'm going to then copy this. I can then go into an application that supports loop, right? So let's say we want to um, open up Outlook, all right? So let's open up Outlook, and I'm just going to send an email so we'll hit Outlook, we'll fire up um, an email and we'll paste our newly created Copilot page into my body of my email. So what I'm gonna do, I'll hit, I'll send it to myself and I'll paste in this loop component. So we can see here, I've got the entire component here embedded into the body of this email. 
the one that we've just created out of Copilot. All right, so if we scroll back up to the top of this email now, we can see that we've got this text in red or the title in red. Now, what that means is that the person that is on the other end of this email doesn't have access, right? So we can see here, we haven't got access. So you can see that the setting here is people who already have access can view or edit. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna do this directly in the body of the email so I don't have to go back to the Copilot conversation in the page. So we can see, I can select recipients of this message and I can set my, uh, I want edit and I'll hit apply. So that's now going to set that, that changes to, uh, to blue. And now I can send that email, um, I'll send it without a subject and that has now been sent to the, the recipients and then they can now interact with that loop component uh, inside of the body of the email or that should I say Copilot page. Now, if I go back into Copilot now, so let's say we have another conversation. So I'm gonna start a new chat um, and let's say, um, let's go next calendar. Uh, I don't think I've got any meetings with myself, but let's have a look, right? So I'll see if we've got any next meetings, but I'm starting a new chat, right? Now, what about if we go back to our chat history? Now, is that page going to then be still there? All right, so let's have a look. So I'm going to now go back to my previous page and or my previous conversation, should I say, and I can see that I've got the uh, Eddie uh, all there. And if, if I hit edit in pages, what we'll see is that page and the context is still there. And I can continue on with my conversation uh, so if I scroll right down to the bottom here, I can actually start to uh, continue on with this page. Or if I have some more prompts that I want to, to uh, ask. So let's say, and this is a nice little feature of, of Copilot as well. I've got the, the embedded document here. I can ask this a question and say, let's list our key points. Uh, so give me a bulleted list of key points from the business case. So I'm going to hit, uh, hit enter there and I'm gonna get a a bulleted list of the key points, all right? So there's our key points coming back from the document. Now, what if I wanna add that to this page, right? So we're continually building this collaborative page out and I can then go edit in pages, all right? So let's go edit in pages and all of a sudden I've got that has now been added to our page, all right? And again, if I jump into my email, I'll go sent items and I'll open up the body of that email, what will happen is that I've got that new addition because loop components are all dynamic, I've now got that addition in that component as well. So the recipients on the other end of that have that updated uh, that updated information as well. So you can see the power there of being able to move from a conversational standpoint into a more collaborative canvas. And given that it's built on loop here, so our Copilot pages are basically loop pages, it stays in sync and we can pick that component up, pop it in a body of an email, even into a, a Teams chat, and then we can all stay in sync from um, from that or whatever endpoint that we're interacting with that, that uh, Copilot page from. So Copilot pages, um, being able to take your conversation out of Copilot into a more collaborative canvas is going to really um, have a big impact in the way that we do collaborate, communicate and work together um, around a particular topic uh, and moving from that conversational mode into a more collaborative canvas. Thanks for watching. See you in the next deep dive.